statistically, bladder cancer strikes most adults later in life. In fact, the average male patient is in the 70s. Yet we know that there are young men and young women who are occasionally diagnosed with bladder cancer. And so what happens when you're not old enough to be a bladder cancer patient? Today's program, we're really delighted to have a couple of experts on living with bladder cancer, two young adult patients, Ben and Brittany, who are here with two urologists, Dr. Seema Porton and Dr. Sam Washington from the University of California, San Francisco Department of Urology. They're all here to share with you a lot of information about bladder cancer and young people, and also to identify that they're not always, we don't always have a lot of information because it doesn't happen as often. So let's talk about the experience with being diagnosed with the sixth most common cancer as a young adult first, and then our experts are gonna share what's known about bladder cancer in this particular population. And I'll just give you a little spoiler alert, there's not a lot, but there's a lot of similarities to other kinds of cancer, and we're gonna make some um, you know, predictions and assessments based on what we know from other cancers. So welcome, Ben, and welcome, Brittany. And I am very excited to have you here. And um, hold on, let me just advance my slides one bit. I did want to mention, by the way, that we're coming up on Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, and I do invite everyone who's here to participate in the annual Walk to End Bladder Cancer on May the 1st. It's a great way to kick off the month and you're welcome to register at beaconwalk.org. And I'm going to go ahead and advance the slides. And now, Brittany, why don't you go ahead and start? Why don't you share a little bit of your lived experience with bladder cancer? Absolutely. So my name is Brittany. I'm the face and voice behind No Bladder Don't Matter. And I was diagnosed um, July 25th, 2019 with stage four metastatic bladder cancer. Um, I was 28 at the time. And honestly, I didn't, I, 2020, right? Everything hindsight's 2020. But at the time I had no idea what was going on. I had gone to my gynecologist in May and told her like, Hey, I'm having, you know, some clotting, it tends to happen around my cycle. It was very cyclical, um, some pain during sexual intercourse and just general pelvic pain. And she did an exam and she didn't really find anything conclusive. She said, well, I think you have BV and a UTI. We'll schedule a follow-up sonogram down the road. And I just kind of went downhill from there until I was in so much pain in my left hip that I drove myself at three o'clock in the morning to the ER. And of course, ER is like, why is a 20 old, 28 year old here complaining about her hip? <laughs> and when they, you know, do vitals, they saw everything was off the charts. My heart rate was crazy. My blood pressure was low. My hemoglobin was non-existent and they admitted me. They saw the mass on x-ray and, you know, confirmation through CT that I had a grapefruit sized mass in my bladder but where my story kind of starts deviating from the normal bladder cancer story was being a woman and being young, I then had a gynecology oncology specialist and a urology oncology specialist who spent two weeks arguing, is this gynecological cancer or is this urological cancer? And so I lived in this like weird place of not knowing what the heck kind of cancer I had until they finally biopsied into pathology and we knew it was bladder cancer. Um, I transferred my care to Emory University Hospital in Atlanta, had my radical cystectomy with a hysterectomy and they took out as many lymph nodes as they could find. Um, this was all a palliative measure. This, my surgery was not gonna be a cure. My surgery was not going to actually help my cancer. Um, it was just to relieve the severe amount of pain I was in. And then we'd just figure out where we would go from there. Um, my recovery was rough, um, and thankfully, early on, I had genetic testing done because I was recovering so poorly. The traditional route of doing radiation and chemo was just not going to be an option, and my genetic test showed that I had the right PDL1 gene to try immunotherapy. So I started Keytruda October 4th of 2019. 
and everything's been on the upswing since then. My um, last CT scan, we're down to monitoring one lymph node and one area of soft tissue that could just be, I'm 30 and I've gained a little bit of weight, but to go from where I was to now has been incredible. But along the way, I've also been absolutely alone. You know, 28, 29, now 30. I'm still one of the youngest people I've personally know with this cancer. So all of the support, mm -hmm. all the books they hand me are usually a picture of someone with gray hair and a lot older than me and are retired and have the avail availability to kind of have an adult child be your caregiver. Whereas I have my mom who's helping me through this. So that's why I started to share my story was to hopefully find the other people that were my age out there and show them there is a face that looks like yours. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's a really powerful story. Ben, what about you? Uh, similar to Brittany, my name is Ben. Uh, I was diagnosed at age 29 in uh, February, 2018. Uh, unfortunately, it was the week after we just announced that we were having our first child. So it was a great swing of emotion from you're on top of the world to the next week. You, am I even going to be around for this? Um, luckily, we caught it early on, but it was muscle invasive, just the beginnings of it. Uh, I had some blood in my urine and uh, luckily I'm married to a nurse practitioner who saw a lot of symptoms that were not right. So we immediately went to the emergency room. Uh, from there, we uh, had a, um, a, a, a x-ray and a, uh, another scan and they discovered there was a mass inside my bladder. Uh, and then a very long weekend until I got surgery and they removed the mass. Uh, a couple more long days later, not knowing what it was, uh, we discovered that we had that I had a uh, bladder cancer. Um, we then got a second opinion based off of what the original hospital wanted to do, just to see because uh, most of the uh, treatments for this cancer were for seventy-year-old men or women. So we wanted to make sure we were. And luckily, we're in the New York City area, which has some great hospitals. So we uh, got some second opinions and we landed at uh, Columbia Presbyterian in New York City. Uh, from there, we uh, got another, uh, we they went in again and discovered that the first hospital actually missed part of the tumor because of the technology that Columbia had, the blue light. And uh, since then, I've gone back, now I'm at yearly scans and eight scans later, I've been cancer free ever since. Uh, so that's been a big relief. Uh, and like Brittany, it's been, it's been hard to uh, relate with people. I've been to support groups, but the majority of those people are older, different situations. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a journey both physically and mentally. Uh, that's for sure, especially being 29 to now I'm 32. It's, it's been a ride for sure. I bet, I bet, and certainly challenges. 